Welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richard, good to be with you. We got a lot on the agenda today. Breaking out news of the day, we got my big homie Rick back. Yes, host and executive producer, TYT Sports. Should be a fascinating <laughs> breakdown, my dear brother. Also, Christian Daytalk, a favorite of the program as well. White House correspondent for the Washington Examiner will be in the bullpen with me to talk about the Trump FBI raid, him pleading the fifth and a few other items should be great. Top story of the day, according to a leaked conversation that we do not have on record, according to the narrative, Donald Trump was in possession of nuclear weapons classified information. Now, I said on day one, the only reason why a corrupt capitalist would steal classified information is to sell it. I said that yes. right here on Indisputable. That's the only yes. reason why, okay? Now, he had an opportunity to just give it back a few months ago when he stole the 15 boxes of stuff out of the White House. So he's a thief. He's a corrupt capitalist who ended up stumbling into the White House. Well, he stumbled out as well, being the same person he was when he stumbled in, corrupt. All right, now let me first do this. The Lincoln Project, which by the way, hella creative people over there. They did this commercial, it really got under the skin of Donald Trump, here it is. Who was it, Donald? Who gave you up to the feds? Who squealed? Who told them what you kept in a safe at Mar-a-Lago? No, not that stuff. Disgusting. The classified documents, 15 boxes of top secret files. That's naughty, Donald. And illegal. You broke the law. No wonder the Department of Justice and the FBI came knocking. They're coming for you. But who leaked? Who sold you out? Was it Jared? I'm grateful. Ivanka? Backing away from you. Don Jr.? Your own son. Eric? Do you even care? Melania? She wants to escape. Mark Meadows? Who did it? All your old Washington friends are talking to the 1 6 committee and the grand jury. They weren't your friends. Maybe it was someone closer. Who could it be? Someone you trusted. Betrayed. Now you're the first president to have his home raided by the FBI. This is your legacy. It's bad, Donald. Your father would be ashamed. And there's no one you can trust. No one. No one at all. There never was. Woo! <laughs> Why won't Democrats do ish like that? That's coming from a Republican outfit. Yeah. So, uh, amazing. All right, I got more. Um, classified documents relating to nuclear weapons are among the items the FBI agents sought in a search of former President Donald Trump's Florida residence on Monday, according to people familiar with the investigation. So they spoke um, under anonymity. They, they did not want to be revealed, the information did come out. Experts in classified information said the unusual search underscores deep concerns among government officials about the types of information they thought could be located at Trump's house and potentially in danger of falling into the wrong hands. Now, let me be very clear. This information doesn't fall into the wrong hands. It is transacted into the wrong hands. That's how this works. So this is not about, oh goodness, where what did I where did I lay that classified nuclear weapons <laughs> document? No, this was intentional. There's more. The people who described some of the material that agents were seeking spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss the ongoing investigation. They did not offer additional details about what type of information the agents were seeking, including whether it involved weapons belonging to the United States or perhaps some other nation. Nor did they say if such documents were recovered as part of the search. A Trump spokesman did not respond to a request for comment. The Justice Department and the FBI also declined to comment. So let me go to the national affairs analyst on MSNBC. Who actually alluded to this previous? Uh, yes, one giant concern, he said, is whether foreign adversaries could find their way possessing them. Talking about classified documents referencing nuclear weapons. Another is the possibility, and God perish the thought. But Donald Trump might have thought, you know, when I leave the White House, I'll take everything of value of potential monetary value 
that's not nailed down. That's what the analyst said, and the analyst may be correct. Former President Donald Trump called late Thursday for the immediate, right now, release of the federal warrant the FBI used to search his Florida estate. Hours after the Justice Department had asked the court to unseal the warrant. With Attorney General Merrick Garland citing the substantial public interest in this matter. He's playing games all the way through. Now the DOJ, at least it doesn't seem as if they are reacting to Donald Trump. It seems more like Trump is reacting to the DOJ. That's somewhat of a transition because usually everybody around Trump is reacting to him. It seems now they have anticipated his moves. Here's what Trump put on True Social. He said, not only will I not oppose the release of documents related to the un-American, unwarranted and unnecessary raid and break in of my palm of <laughs> my home in Palm Beach, Florida, Mar-a-Lago. I am going a step further by encouraging the immediate release of those documents, even though they have been drawn up by the radical left Democrats and possible future political opponents who have a strong and powerful vested interest in attacking me much as they have done for the last six years. So what is Donald Trump doing here? It's called binary marketing. He wants you to believe that this is all about ones and zeros. And if somehow he can convince you that the messenger is corrupt, then thus the message must be corrupt as well. So instead of attacking the information, instead of attacking the reality of the allegation that he was in possession of highly classified information, he thus attacks the messenger, the agents, the warrant, maybe the judge, the prosecutor, Joe Biden. He even rambled about Hillary Clinton and President Barack Obama. That's what he did. Um, there's more. The public's clear and powerful interest, this is a response from the DOJ, clear and powerful interest in understanding what occurred under these circumstances weighs heavily in favor of unsealing. Boom, let's get it. They are unsealing the documents. I need the judge to do the right thing here. Now, understand this, the reason why the DOJ is saying there's this public interest, this public interest is powerful. Because that's your legal case to unseal documents that are typically sealed during this part of the investigation. There is precedent of federal judges actually unsealing the investigative document that led to the raid when there is compelling public interest to do so. So in the wording of the DOJ, the DOJ is using the right wording in order to align with the precedent previously established by federal courts when it comes to unsealing a warrant at the early stages of an investigation. Um, said the said a motion filed in federal court in Florida on Thursday, should the warrant be released, the request is now with the judge. It could disclose unflattering information about the former president and about FBI scrutiny of his handling of sensitive government documents right as he prepares for another run for the White House. During his successful 2016 campaign, he pointed frequently to an FBI investigation into his Democratic opponent, Hillary Clinton, over whether she mishandled classified information. I mean, you gotta look at some irony here, right? Mm -hmm. So the raid took place, Rick, um, August 8th, historical note, that was the same date that Richard Nixon announced his resignation from being president and um, agreeing to never run for office again, okay? Uh, you have this other connection to Trump running in 2016, but starting from 2014, he was saying that Hillary Clinton needed to be arrested for mishandling emails that were classified. Uh, and then his cronies started the lock her up chant. And he said that when he became president, that he would have her arrested, that never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so Rick, what are your thoughts here? Lot. Um, the first is to go back to the Hillary Clinton thing. Wasn't it Trump who uh, concocted a law that said if you do this very offense, you're going to serve roughly five years in prison? So his own law is what 
might be held up against him, which is like wow. beyond <laughs> juicy. The second <laughs> is he put Chris Ray in charge of the FBI, a Trump appointee. And he handed down this search warrant. The third is this use of the word raid is incorrect. They searched it. They presented the evidence of what they thought needed to be seized to a judge in West Palm Beach who signed off on it. Trump also calling this a hoax. His use of the word hoax is beyond stupid. Like he called climate change a Chinese hoax. We're dealing with the effects of climate change. He called the impeachment a hoax. It was no hoax. He called the Mueller investigation a hoax. It was no hoax. He called the coronavirus a hoax. Oh, what are we at? Like six or seven million people have died now. I believe over six million people worldwide have died because of COVID. So his use of the word hoax really doesn't help him if anyone were to look into the history. Very quickly, just a few other points. The first is I'm in the process of reading this book called Commander in Cheat, which was written by Rick Riley. Many people will know him as a sports journalist. Basically, Trump showing off whatever he took from the White House to whoever he pleases, could be a butler, could be a state representative, what have you, could be a donor. Him showing off these things is such a Trump thing to do. Like he will inflate the truth, he will deceive whoever he needs to. There's a story that Rick Riley wrote about about how there was someone from the Golf Channel who was following Trump around when they did a documentary or rather a series on him. And he's like, hey, this is my friend Richard, he's with 60 Minutes. And the guy's like, why are you saying 60 Minutes? I'm I'm just a producer and he's like, sounds better. Like he, he will do anything at any cost at any time to make himself look better. My last point is this whole live golf thing, which I have covered extensively, really seemed off to me from the start. Because we knew that he was carrying the Saudis water along with Vladimir Putin yep. and Russia's water during his time in the White House. What did live golf do to repay those debts? Well. They gave Donald Trump, who had the PGA Championship pulled from Bedminster. They gave him two opportunities to recoup those funds while also giving him funding of his own, giving Jared Kushner over $2 billion, giving Steve Mnuchin over a billion dollars, much of it coming from the Middle East, specifically Saudi Arabia. And there were reports at the time that some of this was because they wanted to become a nuclear superpower. You could go back to 2019 when General Michael Flynn also was accused at least via NBC News of giving Saudi giving Saudi Arabia secrets secrets to the states' nuclear power. Right. There's a lot of things that go into this and this is just the culmination as I view it. Yeah, we're at the tip here of the iceberg mm-hmm. um, and Republicans are already being warned Stop defending Trump because what's coming next cannot be defended. All right. Six Georgia cops, all of them on the scene, decided it's okay for cops to call a suspect the N word. They are now on administrative leave. I have the video. Here it is. So what you just saw were criminals. One cop decided to start using the N-word. Obviously, the other police officers are cool with that because it's culture over policy with them. And then the second officer that you saw on the camera, he literally ripped off the video recorder from the side of the home, 
ripped it off, thought that was the only recording device and threw it in the bushes. Not only is he criminal, he's dumb because just uh, just doing that does not stop the damn video that's already been recorded. Dumbass. <laughs> Six cops are now on administrative leave. The person in charge of them, you're going to really scratch your head here. West Point, Georgia. In West Point, Georgia, six police officers are now on administrative leave after a residence video went viral. The incident was captured on a camera by home security footage. An officer is seen using the N word when referring to the homeowner's son. The officer then threw her front door camera off her porch into, into nearby bushes. So let's go back to what's happening here. They're looking for somebody. This is the mother's home. They're at the mother's home. They're looking for somebody. Well, in the process, the cops started using the N word, right? No objection. Nobody said, oh, hey, buddy, what are you doing? What, why are you talking like that? Because right. their cultural, their culture is pro racism. All right, so understand this. Number two, the officer was engaged in destruction of property. That should be a criminal charge. If you or me, Rick, walked on somebody's property, decided to rip the, rip their video um, off or rip their camera off of the door and throw it, well, we will be charged with a crime. That's destruction of property, that's criminal trespass. In addition to that, why did the cop do it? The why is important. He did it because he thought the N word was captured on the video. He knew his cops were being racist. So what did he do? He tried to cover it up. Mm -hmm. Once again, that's another crime. That's called obstruction of justice. I will classify this as felony obstruction of justice. Also, it's tampering with evidence because this can be used as evidence against a police officer. And it is violation of your oath of office because you have now engaged in an activity that's adversarial to the public trust. That's what you just saw within those 30 plus seconds of video I showed you. Now, are they arrested? No. None of them, they are on administrative leave. Uh, it's Ms. Uh, Madden's understanding, this is what the attorney said. It's Ms. Madden's understanding that the police were looking for her son. When she learned of that, she turned him into the police department or the sheriff's office, said attorney Wendell Major, who represents the family. Major said he's waiting to see how the situation is handled. Um, I do have the cops names, so let me give them to you directly. Donald Bramblett, Dylan Harmon, Zachary Habor, Sergeant William Osteen, and Detective Elizabeth Waganki are still on administrative leave over the incident. The GBI, Georgia Bureau of Investigation, they are looking into the case. Let me say something about the GBI and how they operate in Georgia. They are not actually a prosecutorial uh, wing of law enforcement, they are investigative only. Which means they will not, do not, and cannot independently indict. What they will do is conduct an investigation and then make the investigation known, the findings known to the local prosecutor. That's typically how it works. Now the state of Georgia can technically prosecute through the AG's office. May not happen because it's rare, but the GBI will not make a recommendation to prosecute. They never make a recommendation to prosecute. They say on record, we do not make recommendations to prosecute. Let's put up a picture of the chief of police. Well, I be damned. West Point, Georgia police chief, Donald Britt. Now, let me say this, um, Chief Britt. I've done enough research to know you are a law enforcement man. You got this job because you've worked many years and you've had some controversy. Not enough for me to say you need to resign yet. But I will be very clear about my next statement. Sir, if you do not do the right thing by these cops, I will declare you to be the problem. You, mm. you are an African American male, these cops are obviously racist. This is a liability not only to your professional career, but to the citizens that have entrusted you with supervision of these cops. All right, Rick, thoughts here. All right, so a few as well. Um, the first is we have seen a history 
And you could even say this started from when policing came about with the Texas Rangers, of course, that these incidents are becoming more and more paramount because of the recording devices that we have. I mean, I just, you know, going through the last year and a half to two years, a few came to mind. Gene Almond, if you remember, the chief of police, I believe that was in the state of Georgia, Hamilton, Georgia, along with the patrolman John Brooks, were caught on body cam using the N word. Montgomery County police investigated a white female officer when a batch of officers went and Let's just say uh, conducted business as usual when four black men were getting breakfast outside of a McDonald's. The white female officer used the N word. Very recently, Rose Valentino in Cincinnati used the N word on her own body cam. Sergeant Chad Walker in Columbia, South Carolina, when the governor, this was pre vaccine 2020, the governor's mandate was all bars must close at 11. He used the N word. Three Wilmington police officers were fired for using racial remarks. This just keeps happening over and over and over again. But the problem I have is, let's say hypothetically that these officers are fired, right? Which we would like to happen, I would have to think. The cops protect other cops where they'll feel, because as you said, it's within their own practices, that they could then potentially be hired by another police department within the state or even outside of the state. That's and right. the reason I know this is because when Brianna Taylor was killed, one of those officers was let go by the Lexington Police Department because of his own misconduct. You know who that was? Brett Hankison. This stuff happens over and over and over again. So what needs to change? Does there need to be more oversight? Frankly, there was a report in The Intercept not too long ago, maybe a year or two ago, about the infiltration of white supremacy in police departments. This is just business as usual for them. Because as you saw, and even within another department, when every single Republican voted against um, trying to riddle out white supremacy in the military, they said no. The same thing is happening within police departments. It's tough to find a solution, but the immediate one is they should not be getting paid administrative leave and they should not have a badge and they should not have a gun. Yeah, you have to think about the irony of the fact local citizens, black citizens in particular are now paying for their own oppression because these cops are clearly racist and adversarial to them. And it's not just a word, when we post segments like this, Rick, people push back, Oh my goodness, it's just a word people. Oh, oh my goodness, it doesn't oh, mean please. that they're racist. It's not a word, it's a sentiment. If you believe that black people are that, if you believe black folks are the N word, that means you're going to treat them that way because it's a sentiment and not simply a word. We're gonna follow this, see exactly what happens in the conclusion. All right, school teacher trying to do the right thing has black heroes posted in the classroom. I'm talking about people like, you know, Harriet Tubman, um, Colin Powell, George Washington Carver, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The school decided to rip these pictures down and said it was inappropriate. Well, that teacher has resigned. Let's put up my hero of the week. This teacher. In Florida, his name is Michael James, 61 years of age. He emailed Governor Ron DeSatan and the Escambia County Superintendent Tim Smith Monday night with his resignation. He resigned over what he characterized as racist behavior by a school district employee. And I agree with Mr. James. Mr. James is in a district where Many of his students are what? African American, let's get into it. He wrote that the district employee removed pictures of historic black American heroes, citing them as being, and I quote, age inappropriate. (laughs) On Tuesday morning, he officially resigned as an exceptional student education teacher um, at OJ Sims Elementary School. It was going to be his first year teaching in Florida. Well, see how that went. Images that were removed included The pictures of Dr. King and others, let's put them up. Look at that, look at that. 
according to the school that he was teaching in, these individuals are not heroes. These individuals are controversial. They are not appropriate. Uh, Mr. James told the Pensacola News Journal, it really floored me. I've been teaching special education for 15 years. And it just really floored me when she did that. James was employed to teach students ranging from uh, kindergarten to fifth grade. James chose the board's theme because the majority of the students and the residents in the community are black. And he wanted to motivate his students with inspirational leaders they could easily look up to and see themselves in. That's how you do it. When I was a high school teacher, I did the same thing. There's more. This is how the incident unfolded. On Monday, the behavior analyst and another behavior coach entered his classroom to help him set up the room. This is kind of unusual, but that's okay, James recalled thinking. They came in and we started moving tables around and swapping some out. And I had made the bulletin board a couple of days earlier. So the black people are already there, all right? Bulletin board was directly behind his desk in front of the class, which is pretty atypical. Uh, it contained about five to seven images of black historical figures, as well as the Pledge of Allegiance. The individual pictures were about the size of a piece of paper with short written passages on them explaining the achievements of each person. Mr. James said, and I quote, I was sitting down in one of the children's chairs cutting something out. And I turned around and saw her start taking something off the bulletin, Mr. James recalled. When he questioned what the behavioral analyst was doing, she said something along the lines of, it wasn't age appropriate, something like that, James said. Mr. James does not remember the woman mentioning race while taking down the photos, but he did not uh, but he did note that she had also seized a picture of former President Barack Obama <laughs> that he placed near his desk because there wasn't room on the bulletin board. Now, please understand what's happening right here. Please understand what's happening. You have a black school district, you have a white educator who understands the necessity of students being able to see themselves in the leadership presented in front of them. My mother, the woman who adopted me is still a school teacher today. She does the exact same thing every single year. I help her decorate that classroom every year. This is not abnormal, this is actually pretty normative, standard. That's why Mr. James said, I was shocked that they were doing this, there's more. Uh, she picked it up and said, you don't need to put this up either, James <laughs> recalled. She said, I can't remember exactly what she said, but she said, the kids are too young or something like that. It floored me. I thought, this is the first black president. Oh, can I say something else to you, Mr. James? Not only was he the first black president, <laughs> he was a president. Mm -hmm. See how that works? He was a president. She has literally told you, you cannot have a picture of a former president of the United States inside of your classroom. There's more. Let's go ahead and expose the superintendent, put his picture up, okay? Uh, superintendent Tim Smith. Is it rude to say that I predicted it? <laughs> Not rude, brother, but <laughs> here's what's interesting. The way he decided to tackle this is interesting. The superintendent Tim Smith said teachers are permitted to decorate their classrooms with educational materials. He was unaware of any policies that would prohibit displaying pictures of inspiration, inspirational American heroes. Smith said a full investigation of the incident, which he called an anomaly has been launched. The district has yet to confirm the identity of the district employee. More details um, should come on why James resigned. I'm gonna get to this superintendent in just a second because his response seems right, but it's not. James said he could not work for a school under the umbrella of a school district that would hire people who would condone such behavior. I hate to say this about everybody in the staff or the leadership there, but something is not right. He said something needs to be changed or fixed. Uh, Mr. James, you are teaching in Florida, sir. Okay, 
you're teaching in Florida. Uh, these things happen in Florida uh, to, to a tune higher than other states based on the reporting we've done recently. Now, let me say this about the superintendent, put his picture back up. So the superintendent said all the right things in a prepared statement written by his communications director, okay? Superintendent says, I, you know, teachers can, you know, they can decorate their own classrooms. Um, I was unaware of any policy where uh, teachers cannot do this. Understand the fake out that just happened. He focused on Mr. James rather than focusing on the awful and horrendous behavior of the behavioral analyst and the other district supervisor who was in the classroom. You see, the focus of his statement should have been antithetical to those two individuals rather than simply nodding and agreeing that Mr. James was correct or highlighting that the policy should not have allowed this to happen. How about you actually have a statement, not that you're investigating the incident, but you are in fact investigating the two people who did this deed and revealed their names because they are public servants. Mr. James, his name is exposed here, expose the other people who were involved, Mr. Superintendent. So if you want to be right, let's do it all the way. Let's do it all the way, brother, because you are a superintendent over a school that has majority black students. This is your opportunity to show them you're not an ass. <laughs> all right, Rick, thoughts? Uh, white fragility is a serious thing, eh? Um, I, 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 as I'm reading this right, and as I'm going through this, and I'm listening to you, uh, the only thing I could think of is like, whose photo would be acceptable? Like, I'm going to send my photo. Can I send my photo to the school? You so are yeah. more than welcome to send your photo. I don't think it'll be accepted. I don't think so. You know, my my mind, you know, a show favorite here, Doc. Herschel Walker. Is his photo acceptable? Is that something that the students should strive to be? Like I'm I'm super curious, like what what would it take? You know, that's a great point. Yeah, I, I I am curious, but like this also reminds me of a story that we covered on TYT Sports probably two, three years ago of a math teacher for like 20 plus years in Florida who put up a mural of Colin Kaepernick. And the calls that they received from parents forced this math teacher during Black History Month to tear down that mural. So like th this wow. isn't necessarily a new thing, it's more of the voices are being empowered because yes. you have a governor who is passing stuff like the Stop Woke Act and the Don't Say Gay Bill. And what he's doing is empowering much like Donald Trump because hey, let's let's be real about this. He rode those coattails until he didn't need them because he made a name for himself. That's right. He is empowering the bullies. He is empowering these people to insert themselves in the students' criteria when they probably don't even know, you know, fifth grade algebra, but they will implore the schools to listen to them. We are empowering the wrong people. And I and I noticed, you know, in in the Pensacola news article that there is a teacher shortage. It has been driven a lot by the parents. Yep. Much like youth sports. The parents are out of control. They are insane when it comes to this stuff. Now, very quickly, not only are they empowering, in my view, bigoted parents, because if you, if you're getting mad, you know, at the pictures we saw, it says something to me about your character. But sure. this is this is also a governor who, during the gubernatorial debate with Andrew Gillum said to his constituents mainly, we can't monkey up this election. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who has spoken at very alt right conservative seminars who have said and their founders have said that black people need to thank white people for freeing them. That's the company he keeps. And thus with his constituency that looks up to him and votes for him. These are the results of him being in power. Very well said. We got more on the other side, indisputable, stick and stay.
taking part. The cops aren't gonna do this should go right around your neck, you little Oh, I'm sure piece of Very sad, we have the identity. Let's put this Karen's picture up for mass. Her name, according to the narrative, is Laureen May Lake, AKA Lucifer of Long Beach, California. Terrorizes the International City Property Management apartment complex just off of Pacific Coach Highway. According to the individual who shared the video, TikToker Danish, Lake has for three months, three months that Karen, has been issuing death threats, yelling racial slurs, drawing swastikas, throwing glass, banging on doors and windows, using a water hose to spray into the apartment, cussing out neighbors, threatening people with a baseball bat and much more. Now, another dynamic, because I'm sure you're asking, well, what are the police doing? Nothing, they have done nothing according to the property owners, all right? Isn't that something? We provide a mirror here on Indisputable. This mirror does a couple of things. It's for reflection, yes, but it's also for an opportunity at correction. So we are hoping that if somebody knows this particular Karen to intervene quickly, because this kind of behavior can either hurt someone else, or she can bring hurt upon herself. Rick, thoughts here. The easiest answer that I think a lot of people will likely uh, internalize as they're watching this video is, well, why don't you just move? And my quick response is, well, why should it be on us? Mm -hmm. If If we are the ones who are doing everything right. The second part is, Recording these antics are so incredibly important because then you have undeniable evidence. My third, and this is just speculation, my third point is she has to have a connection to law enforcement somewhere. Because when you have so many examples, like countless examples of a criminal criminally, and then nothing coming about and them not having any sort of punishment. That's when I start to think like, okay, who does she know in what instance that she is continually staying away from really ever being arrested, being charged, what have you? Because how how many violations did we see in the span of like 50 seconds? Right. I counted like five, I'd say. So I'm sorry for the neighbors, I'm sorry for everybody that lives in this complex. And hopefully, hopefully she is charged because you guys don't deserve this. Yeah, and here's the other part. While the behavior is obviously extreme, remember, they started recording after after a certain point. So there's plenty Mm -hmm. of evidence not on record by way of a video recording that took place prior to them documenting the criminality. Okay.
Mm -mm. I'm not supposed to laugh on television. Um, <laughs> that, that was their five piece special. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Let me get my composure back, all right. Okay, listen, I do not condone violence, but I do condone self defense. It was clear, let's put it up full mass here. All right, let, let's, let's just go to it, okay. This was an opportunity to simply log a disagreement and go home. But instead, this Karen engaged in her Karenicity, became physically violent with a hard working employee. And the hard working employee decided to defend herself and serve up the Karen with a five piece special. Now, is this something? That should be tolerated, of course not. Now, I've worked in service industries before. I've worked in fast food. I've waited tables, done all of it. Being in that industry, already tough enough. Let, let's yes. just keep it 100, it's tough enough. So anyone who knows me, when we go out to eat, I don't tip based on how great the service was. They're, they're already getting paid typically under minimum wage. All right, they're doing a job, the job is difficult, okay? You tip based on the fact that they are working, period, they are working, right? So this individual decided, hey, there's a person in front of me that I disagree with. So let me go ahead and hit this person. Please keep in mind, I guarantee you this Karen does not operate like that with everybody. But the reason this Karen decided to operate like that with somebody that's working behind the cash register is because she has determined if you're working behind a cash register, your status is so low that I could physically assault you and get away with it. That's why, because I promise you, she's not walking around slapping and punching and hitting everybody that she has a disagreement with. So she has perceived status to be low and perceived her status to be high. And she thought she was going to simply hit somebody and walk off. Well, that didn't work out. So let this be a PSA. For those who think engaging in this kind of criminal Karenicity is acceptable. But you never know, there could be somebody on the other side of that cash register ready to give you what you got coming to you. Rick, thoughts here. I thought that was Christina Pushaw for a second. So um, <laughs> what I noticed about this was, uh, and as we've covered many times, workers in the service industry are just fed up. Yep. Um, and I don't blame them. Because of the instances that we have seen, like yourself, I also worked in the service industry. I was a table wiper. That was my very first job at a local hot dog place. I worked at a, uh, a staple in Chicago, but like a deep dish pizza place. Um, I took phone orders. I uh, helped put food in people's cars. I box pizzas mainly. You know, you hear a lot of it. And I agree with you that the reason why you tip, even if the service isn't amazing, which by the way, it is not going to be because people don't want to deal with what we just saw, mm -hmm. which is something that they deal with every single day now. Because people were frustrated over the pandemic, now that it's over, but people were frustrated over the pandemic and they are taking their anger out on frontline workers. But service is going to be slow across the country because people realize they don't have to deal with this sort of stuff anymore. Yep. There's no reason to deal with this sort of stuff anymore. Why would you sign up for, as you said, a minimum wage job with where we're at right now? I mean, minimum wage should be at least 25. Um, people are getting paid in the single digits. They realize they don't have to put up with it anymore. Not physically, of course, but yep. just throwing their hat in a different ring when it comes to the work of a professional person. So do we condone violence? No, but as always, self-defense seems fine. Very well said. We got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. <sighs> okay, this is a doozy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there's a fight, it involves a spirit, airline worker and uh, a woman, and they're in an argument. I'll just let you see it, here it is. You haven't lost your mind, don't touch me ever in your life. You 
touch me first, and then you got in my face. Don't ever invade my face. Get out of my face! No, I'm not. I'm here. Here. But you I'm here. You're me. touching me again. You're touching me again. And here's where things took a turn for the worst. You she touched me. She touched me. And I'm telling you, don't touch her. She can't do her hands. Hey, relax, relax. Relax, 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 relax. I fight whoever. I fight whoever. Put your hands on me. I fight whoever. Put your hands on me. I fight whoever. I fight whoever. Knock your bitch ass out. Knock me 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 out. I do appreciate the fact that individuals who had absolutely no obligation to step in, stepped in and they stopped something more disastrous from happening. When I saw this post, it was an interesting title. And that title said, which one is the Karen was the title. There's a back and forth. This conflict should not have happened, should not have been this extreme, should not have become physical. I don't disagree with that. But, and I know some people will not completely see it my way, I'm fine with that. Yes, the woman did hit the male after he was very aggressive, obviously. She said some things that were antithetical to him and they were bad. I don't like some of the things she said. I don't like his actions either. But when he started chasing her, running after her, going through other people to get at her, that became even more of a problem. Now, I'm going to highlight a statement from Spirit, Spirit Airlines, because he actually works for them. He's an employee. And as an employee, there are ways to de-escalate. In the beginning of that back and forth, you saw that he was aggressive toward her. She was also aggressive in response. Let me go ahead and give you the response from Spirit. Spirit Airlines and the DFW, Airport told WFAA in a statement Friday morning that they were aware of the altercation between the agent and the passenger. They added the vendor at DFW has suspended the agent. Spirit Airlines does not tolerate violence of any kind. And we are working with law enforcement, local law enforcement to investigate this matter according to the statement. Really interesting. Now I will say this about Spirit Airlines, they don't have a great reputation for um, let's say the execution of customer service. Let me highlight another story that's extremely sad. There's another incident of controversy involving Spirit Airlines. Basically, a woman, let's put a picture up. A woman claims she got kicked off of Spirit Airlines because of her skin condition. They had mistaken her skin condition for monkeypox and they kicked off the plane. And it says in the graphic, they had me get off the plane in front of everyone along with my wife to interrogate me about the eczema. uh, eczema. I've had all my whole life. They asked me to provide medical documents and told my wife to watch her attitude. I've never been so humiliated in my life. Now she was finally able to board the flight afterwards And according to the statement, here's why. We were able to board the flight after I presented a tube of my prescribed cream and my wife called uh, called out the CRO on being discriminatory, which is when she was told there was no need for an attitude. 
As we walked down the plane again, a flight attendant was walking down the aisle. And when she saw me, she promptly turned around and walked the other way, not even looking at me as if eye contact would spread it. Uh, this happened to other people who were not so lucky to have anything with them as proof. And there's speculation because of the adverse narrative connected um, with Mikey Pox uh, that this decision was made by those employees because it was a same sex couple as well. All right, okay, that's it, top to bottom. Uh, Rick, thoughts on this? Um, <clears throat> let me go back to something you, you said initially. I personally don't find anything controversial that you said about how, you know, the moment that the employee started chasing was when you had a problem. Personally, I agree with the guy who stepped in and said, you are not gonna put your hands on a woman. Right. Because that is common sense. When is it ever appropriate for that to happen? Right. Maybe in the most extreme, gruesome circumstances, is that allowed? In this, <clears throat> I personally feel like the woman was obviously in the wrong and she should be given a suspension from flying because of how she treated an employee of an airline. However, I also think that the employee escalated this. He did not do anything even under very bad circumstances to try and negate a bad situation. I think what would have been appropriate was creating distance and calling for someone who is above him with the airline because there are phones at every single gate to then try and nip this in the bud. Her putting her hands on him, bad. Him attacking her, bad. Everyone in this story is kind of bad. Like there, there is no, there is no positive in the end. I know that the reports are saying that he got suspended. Wouldn't surprise me if he gets fired, but I would also like to see some sort of punishment for her as well. Distance, de-escalation. He's the professional. He's the employee. Um, she was no longer a threat to him whatsoever as he was chasing through crowds in order to retaliate. Uh, and so I see it like you see it, we, we agree 100%. Um, okay, you know, we say from day one, uh, this woman is a killer. She has finally been arrested. Okay, that's the um, Instagram and OnlyFans model who claimed to be a victim after she stabbed her African American boyfriend to death. Uh, uh, Clinty, new information has been released that shows the historical violence of this particular murder suspect. Here it is. Okay, they're on the elevator. Obviously, she's upset, she strikes him, continues to physically assault the man she later decided to murder. As you see, he is attempting to defend himself. He is not striking her back. And then he tries to actually restrict her movement. That part is coming up now. Unsuccessful attempts here. Now remember the narrative from her side is that he attacked her. If you remember the first time I reported on this story, I highlighted her own friends who said, you know what? We don't really buy her story because honestly, we've seen her attack him. And they both had a pretty volatile relationship, but we've seen her be violent with him. This came from her own friends. Now, did, did she get arrested immediately? Of course not. She was uh, detained temporarily, came up with a sob story that was not corroborated, by the way, by the evidence, nor by testimony of her friends. She then goes to a mental hospital because she says she's suicidal. She becomes a victim immediately, pulling a Karen on all the cops. She's released from the mental hospital, and then she goes to a bar, drinks, and celebrates. She got away with murder. 
right? At least according to her at that moment. And then she decides to post a, a picture of her uh, barely clothed with blood on her body on her OnlyFans page. Who in the hell does that? A killer does. Miami prosecutors released the video. All right, and right, let's put up the picture of uh, her and the uh, man she killed. Let's put that up, remind people of the dynamic here. Miami prosecutors released video showing Courtney Clinney attacking Christian Obum Selly in the elevator of their Miami apartment. This happened uh, February 21st. The defendant was aggressively attacking Christian, said the Miami Dade State Attorney, uh, who called the young man a victim of domestic violence. She said the couple had been involved in an extremely difficult and combative relationship since November of 2020. That's noted for the record. Um, so the girlfriend was reportedly arrested following a, a domestic violence incident in Vegas in July of last year. Rundle said police had responded to numerous domestic disturbance complaints about the couple and their building's management was moving to evict them. An arrest report said prior incidents with the model being physically violent with the victim ultimately led to her arrest. The violent and toxic two year relationship of them both did not have to end in tragedy with Christian's murder as a victim of domestic violence, the prosecutor added. Let's put up that picture, let me remind you of the picture that she decided to put up, okay? That's what she did after a whole human being is dead due to her actions. Uh, she was arrested in Hawaii on Wednesday on suspicion of stabbing her boyfriend to death, which happened April 3rd. Police were called to the couple's apartment after she uh, stabbed him in the chest. His autopsy report said the blade went three inches into his body and pierced a major artery. The girlfriend admitted to the killing. But she said it was in self defense. She claims Christian pushed her and threw her to the floor. So she grabbed a kitchen knife and threw it at him from about 10 feet away. That was the story the cops believed, keep that in mind. However, the autopsy report noted that Christian's stab wound occurred from forceful downward thrust and was not caused by the girlfriend throwing a knife from 10 damn <clears throat> feet. So let's be very clear, white woman allegedly murders black boyfriend. She comes up with a story that I guarantee you, nobody else would have accepted that story, but the police being told this by a white female and a black boyfriend dead, okay? Understand the context. You're saying, madam, that you were on the floor. Let me get this right, cuz I'm not the police, but I think I could have interrogated this. So you're on the floor and you see a knife and that knife just happens to be exactly where he pushed you. So you pick up this knife that just happens to be where he pushed you. He's exactly 10 feet away according to your rebuttal. You throw the knife and that's how he died. So ma'am, are you on the floor when you throw the knife or did you get back up? Was he coming toward you aggressively or did he remain 10 feet back? My point is they decided to believe a lie knowing it was a damn lie. The cops did that, she just got arrested. This happened months ago. We were calling for the arrest of this woman on day one, showing you, highlighting to you the reality of the bias and the prejudice contextualizing our criminal justice system. Cuz I promise you, if Christian would have been the one who did the stabbing and he oh, came man. up with that dumb ass story to say it was self defense, his ass would have been locked up that night. She would have gotten away with this. I get upset because she would have gotten away with this if it had not been for the public pressure and the family who got involved and said this did not happen the way she said. And her own friends getting involved telling the police this did not happen the way she said. Christian was not an abusive man to her, she was abusive to him. They said that in the beginning, violating the story of their own friend for the sake of justice. And she just got arrested.
put up a picture. Four months later, she goes to jail. Once again, she's crying white tears. They may actually work again, ironically. They worked the first time, and we've seen them work routinely. But to me, you're looking at a cold blooded killer. Rick, thoughts here? So, <clears throat> very well put. Um, when we do, you know, what if the shoe was on the other foot? And we do it a lot in politics because mm -hmm. can you imagine if hypothetically, you know, everything that's going on at Mar a Lago, it were to happen to, let's say, Representative Omar mm. or uh, Barack Obama? Yep. Because it's just amazing what. A certain kind of folk can get away with in this country. The second part is there were disturbances when they lived in Austin, Texas, where the neighbors would say fighting was paramount. The same happened when they lived in Miami, Florida. They almost got evicted from one of those properties. The biggest thing for me, because if there is no doubt at all when it comes to the science, of really anything, science in a way to copy and use the word of the show is indisputable. So how I see it is when you have a lie that says it was from 10 feet, because this is the crux of the case, let's be right, real about this. Exactly. When you say it's 10 feet and then the medical examiner comes in and is like, well, that's not true. It was from a close distance. What is your defense? First off, if, if this was true, and I'm not making light of this, but if this was true, she should have gone into like ESPN 8 the Ocho and done like sword throwing. Right. Like there is, there is no possible way, the one in five million chance that she throws from 10 feet and it lands. And there is a reason why, as I have covered many times on TYT Sports, about what Colin Kaepernick is doing. Because what he wanted to do when there are injustices, he has funded medical examiners. He has mm -hmm. funded autopsies. That's right. Why? Because we need the truth. We need to get to the bottom of these crimes that are taking place. Because as you alluded to, and as we have covered many times, police are not trustworthy. The statements they put out are usually to benefit themselves and maybe someone that they know in their orbit to protect them. So it's very important that not only do we fund these things, but we also listen to the medical examiners, the coroners, those who do the autopsies, the professionals, because those are the one thing, the only thing really that we can rely on. And thus we are going to see this now play out in court, probably, possibly not in our favor. Farewell said. Welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen, in the bullpen today, we have Mr. Christian Daytok, uh, experienced journalism professional, a wide background of editorial leadership positions, and really one of the best out there. All right, thank you so much, Christian. How are you today, sir? I'm great, Dr. Ritchie, uh, excited to be back with you and breaking down all this news relating to the former president today. Man, this is interesting. So let's start with the reality that a former president of the United States has now been raided by the FBI and possibly based on the narrative was in custody, had nuclear weapons um, classified information related to nuclear weapons. That you don't get bigger than that. You got to think about secrets. Like that's the biggest thing because of the reality, it can actually end entire civilizations. A nuclear weapon can end a civilization. Talk about what this actually means and give us some insight to your investigative or journalism um, as it relates to this. Well, this is wholly unprecedented, first and foremost. There's yeah. never been a violation by the president of the Presidential Records Act, nor the Espionage Act, which according to the warrant that was signed off by Judge Reichardt before the raid of Mar-a-Lago indicated former President Trump 
was in clear violation of in addition to this ongoing investigation by the Justice Department. And when you think about it, violations of the Espionage Act in our current modern times, the two big names that come to mind first and foremost, Chelsea Manning, who of course was yep. marshaled back in 2013, served a seven year jail sentence for their role in whistleblowing against US military. And of course, Julian Assange, who was indicted in 2019. Now, President Trump might not be risen to that level of uh, of uh, such a such a sentence or the, the number of indictments, considering the number of documents that we have. Uh, the the item receipt of, appears to indicate that authorities left with 11 boxes of various materials this past week, uh, at least one of which was marked top secret. Uh, but this is a major big deal. I mean, if you think about the nuclear arsenal, the United States, uh, you know, ace in the hole when you think about its military deterrence and military might. This is something that we've never seen before. Uh, so I think it's probably best instead of uh, prognosticating, we should sit back, wait for that full warrant and full item list to be released by the DOJ, which again, we just got information breaking within the last five minutes or so that that's going to be handed down imminently. Uh, because again, this this is un, uncharted territory we're in right now. Uh, and no matter what President Trump says, or, or excuse me, former President Trump, or you know, even his opponents are saying, no one really knows how this is going to play out at this point in time. Let's look at the facts. Eleven boxes were removed during this particular raid. You already had 15 boxes returned by way of a mandate sent to the former president of the United States. So that's 26 boxes of information, right? Those are the things we know of on record. Now let's go to the character of Donald Trump, because him being president changed nothing as far as his character. Before he became president, he was a corrupt capitalist. While he was president, he was a corrupt capitalist. When he exited being president, he was a corrupt capitalist. Today, he's still a corrupt capitalist. Why would, and this is the question I have and I pose this, on record, why would a corrupt capitalist steal highly consequential classified information relating to nuclear weapons, period? And if they try to spin later, Christian, that somehow he wanted the American public to know about these things, because that could become an excuse later. The president has full authority to declassify. So if this was such an issue where he believed it needed to be outside of the custodial dynamic of intelligence and classification, he could have declassified the information while being president of the United States. My point is this, Christian, and I know you're a hardcore and reputable journalist, but look at the information. if. If a former president is in receipt by way of theft of highly classified documentation relating to nuclear weapons technology, and he has been given multiple opportunities to turn this stuff back over to give it back to the official government. Why do you think a former president would not do so when he was mandated in the beginning? And the DOJ sending the FBI means They did not believe he would produce this classified information under subpoena. Which means they thought he's either going to hide it or destroy it if we issue the subpoena. What are your thoughts on that? You threw a lot at me right there. But (laughs) I, I think when you look at how Donald Trump operates, especially following January 6th, you have to take his ego into account. And we know for a fact at Mar a Lago, the the former president has uh, put on notes from Kim Jong Un on display. He's displayed a number of uh, trinkets and souvenirs from his time in the White House to show the people down in Florida, people who still view him as not only the the leader of the Republican Party, but in many people's minds, uh, falsely I might add, uh, the true president of the United States right now. And I think that's really how you have to to view this thing. I don't believe this man is operating as a rational, uh, you know, cold calculated, uh, you know, cunning capitalist the way you put it. 
I think he's someone who's been pushed into a corner. He's a dangerous animal right now. And so he wanted to pull all of the ammo he had with him to potentially retaliate down the line. Now there is one note here that I, I think is a very important that we, that we um, I guess, take note of, excuse my alliteration for a second. But Cash Patel, one of the top ranking Trump intelligence officials, has been making the media rounds today talking about a point you just mentioned. All of these documents were declassified by former President Trump by leaving the, the before leaving the White House. Even if that were true, there is a proper protocol that that should go through and that it should be properly disclosed, if not outright published to the public, that these tranches of documents, these sensitive, materials and, uh, and and bulletins, whatever they might be, uh, their classification rating has been decreased. It would lead me to believe from everyone I've talked to that that process was not followed. So now in violation of the Espionage Act, it might not just be that former President Trump had these documents. It could be that he mishandled them and that the chain of command, uh, the proper routes for these declassification type processes were violated. There's hey, another Christian. point that we need to take oh, part of. But I'll let you kick it. You know, I'll kick it no, back no. to you right now. No, I don't no, want to get no, too long-winded. <laughs> no, go ahead. I want you to to finish your your next point, please. Well, my next point has to do with Trump's own supporters, and this is the part where I think it's especially important for the media to not necessarily dance on his grave and wait to see exactly what is in these documents, because what you know, we take a look at what happened Thursday in Cincinnati. A man uh, who we we haven't prescribed a motive to via law enforcement attacked, tried to shoot his way into an FBI office. And you have to think the violent rhetoric from, from former President Trump about the FBI, from a number of sitting Republicans, supporters of the former president that they've made in the last couple of days. That's going to drive some of these hardcore supporters of former President Trump, some of these people who might have marched on the Capitol on January 6th had they been in Washington to do something dangerous, to do something reckless. And that's, I think, the last thing we need right now as a country. Yeah, and the people that engage in that activity need to have their asses locked up immediately. So look at Marjorie Taylor Greene. Within 48 hours, she has declared herself, after that raid, she declared herself enemy of the state. She now has a new clothing line, defund the FBI and a bunch of other sayings. So she's making money off of this. And I will say this, Christian, about the new kind of national public television defense of Donald Trump. Uh, They're lying, let me tell you why they're lying. When this raid first went down, that was not the defense. Donald Trump did not say, I I declassified all this stuff, let me tell you how it happened. Uh, That was not the defense from the attorneys. As a matter of fact, they were no comment for a while. Now, days later, when they have been able to huddle and figure out their spin or cover story, all of a sudden, there's a new narrative, a new defense, that was not initially proposed. Why, Christian? Because they're lying, that's why. Uh, And maybe this was their default setting, thinking, all right, at some point we're going uh, to maybe have to explain this, and this is the way we will do it. I'm not 100% sure on that. But I'm gonna let you get the final words on this one. Uh, As it stands now, do you see it the way I see it? The FBI, the Department of Justice, they have really, in, in a very practical way, staked their reputation on the credibility of this particular raid and the investigation against President Trump. How do you see that? I think you're absolutely right. When you look at former President Trump's political history, it's really one of, and I I hate using this words, but it's almost an underdog story. Mm -hmm. If you look at it through the media's lens, there's been so many scandals, so many times he's been quote unquote dead to right. Uh, They've got him now, his back is up against the wall. And he's continually managed to survive these scandals. If he finds a way out of this one, uh, I can't imagine that any other movement, any other investigations into him by the current administration will be looked at as uh, plausible, as as rational, and as non-political moving forward. So it's imperative that the FBI get this one correct, uh, or if not, we're entering, again, uncharted territory. Very well said. Uh, Christian, always a pleasure, we're out of time. Thank you for coming on the show. Tell people how they can follow you and check out your great work. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Talk Radio, TOC Radio. Dr. Richie, it's always a pleasure being back with you. Thank you so much. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.